Do you want to run ads to people who already engaged with your business? Well, that's exactly what retargeting is about. And in this video, I'm going to show you the A to Z of running an effective retargeting campaign. Now, I've personally spent over eleven and a half million dollars between my business and my clients' businesses on Facebook and Google ads. And a lot of that is done through retargeting. And on top of that, I've also done over 5 million in sales online. So if you're new, this video will help you understand retargeting from a ground level. And if you're not new, this will help show you some advanced strategies that you can implement to make your retargeting more effective. So let's head over to my screen share and get into the tutorial. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to business.facebook.com and then you're going to choose your ad account. Now, if you don't have a business manager, which you may not, you're just going to go to adsmanager.facebook.com. Either one works, but you can click into ads manager here. And essentially that's going to take me into my ad account. Now I obviously have multiple ad accounts and I just started a new retargeting test campaign recently. And I'm going to show you how to basically replicate that. Essentially, this is not going to be a from the ground up Facebook ads tutorial, but I am going to go through the whole process. But first I want to talk about really what is retargeting. Now retargeting comes down to basically running the same Facebook ad you would otherwise, except you're using a different audience. So retargeting really comes down to audiences. Now, if I go into audiences here on the left, you're going to see that I already have a bunch of audiences. Now, these are essentially saved audiences, custom audiences, or lookalike audiences. And I will get to what those are. But if you click on create audience, you'll see those three options here. So a saved audience is like you've chosen the age you want to target and the area you want to target, and you've saved that information. Custom audience is a data source from either offline or online on Facebook, something that's using data that you already have about people. So this could be a customer list. It could be people who've watched a video on Facebook. It could be people who visited your Instagram page. There's a lot of stuff you can do in here. A lookalike audience is when you take a custom audience and you say, Hey, meta, I guess we'll call them in this case. Hey, meta find people who are similar to this custom audience. So that's what a lookalike audience is. So lookalike audience is not retargeting. It's taking a retargeting list and finding more people like them. So this video is going to be really about custom audiences. So if I go create custom audience, you're going to see here that I'm going to get all these options I just spoke about. So specifically website, customer list, app activity, if you have an app offline activity, which is a manual upload of information, basically catalog, Video is a big one that we use these days, Instagram account, lead form. So that's if you ran a lead ad and people opened your lead form, you can retarget people based on what they did or didn't do. Uh, events. So these are Facebook events. If people attended an event or didn't attend an event, a Facebook page, Instagram account, obviously incident experience is something that is relevant to ads, shopping, augmented reality. Don't even know what the augmented reality thing is. That's I assume that's actually for Meta's quest. So the things you're probably going to use most are website, customer list, Instagram account, Facebook page, and video. So we don't need to worry about the rest of them. Like most of you are just going to use website. So let's start with that. How does this work? Well, you've probably heard of a Facebook pixel before. I'm not going to go into how to install the pixel on this video, but you go into data sources in your account here and you create a pixel and you install it on your website. It depends on what website you have, how you do that. But essentially it's just a bit of code that loads when your website pages load and it sends information from your website back to your ad account. So you can essentially retarget those people. So something a lot of people do in e-commerce is you retarget people that reached your checkout page that didn't actually buy, right? You might retarget them with a coupon code. So that's how that works. You can also retarget people who've clicked on a button. There's a lot of different things you can do, but if you do go to website, most of you are probably just going to use either all website visitors, or you're going to use people who hit a certain page. Now you can do up to like 180 days is the max, basically all website visitors, or you can do people who visited specific pages. So if you say URL contains book, so on our website, agentlaunch.com slash book is how you would book a call. If you're a real estate agent, you want to talk about our company generating leads for you. So you can do URL contains or URL equals, right? Basically that would be targeting everyone who's actually reached that page. Now, again, for most people, you're just going to do all website visitors. And sometimes you're going to do 180 days, the max. That's probably what most of you are going to do. If you're early on, you don't have a big enough audience to target because the reality is your audience needs to be pretty substantial for you to actually run an ad to them. You can't retarget an audience of five, just to be clear. There are minimums in place and generally it has to be at least a hundred, but you're not going to get very far with that. You want to aim for a thousand for any audience. And then you can include more people. You can exclude people. So this is where it's interesting. I want to exclude people. That's not our actual thank you page, but if you had a thank you page after they booked a call, you could run an ad to people who visited the book page, but haven't been to the thank you page. We've done a lot of this where Basically it's everyone who almost booked, but didn't, right? It's the same idea with the shopping cart. It's like people who reached your checkout, but they didn't complete it. That would be something you could do. And then essentially you would give this a name. So you want to have a naming convention. So slash book, but not slash thank you 180 days. That would be how you'd create an audience like that. Now for us, this doesn't necessarily make sense. I'm not running a retargeting ad based on that, but that's the website. Okay. The next one 
is going to be Instagram account or Facebook page. So really all this is, is you can, you can be targeting people who've engaged with your account, who visited your account, who engaged with a poster ad, who sent a message to the account. So this is where it gets more complex and it really depends on your unique business and what your lead generation strategy is. If you're running like a messenger ad campaign, which is actually what I'm going to show you how to do in this, this video, basically you might want to be targeting people who've sent a message to your account. If you're doing that at enough of a scale or volume, right? Most of you again, will just be like people who've engaged with your account. It's, so if they like to post, if they went to your page, anything like that, that would be considered an engagement. Same rules apply. You could include or exclude people. So you can do like everyone who engaged with the account, anyone who visited the profile, something like that. So you can stack these things on top of each other. I'm not going to go over Facebook page because it's basically the same events are pretty obvious. You get a lot of the same things. Customer list. I do want to talk about because I get asked about this a lot. Essentially what this is, is you're uploading a list of data into Facebook and they're going to try and find people on Facebook who are matching that data. So if you upload, Eric Preston, you have my email, my phone, all of my information, it will find me and you can run an ad to me, right? So what you want to do here is download the file template. Now I'm just going to actually open that up in a Google sheet. Okay. So you will get this file template and you can, I upload it in a Google sheet just so I can show you, but you, you will get this in like whatever you're using, whether it's Microsoft Excel, or in my case, I'm using a Mac, but basically what this is, is you're going to use this as an, as a template to upload your data. So the more data you have, the better, and you want to have at least a list of like a thousand people generally, because when you upload this into Facebook, it's going to allow you to match these columns to their fields, but it's actually going to do it automatically for you. If you use their actual template. Now you'll see, there's a lot of information in here, but you want to use as much information as you had. Now, this doesn't actually work very well for us because we have a lot of people's real estate emails and they didn't sign up to Facebook with their real estate email. So that doesn't really work. You want to have at least email phone name, but if you have zip state country, obviously you're, you're probably not gonna have people's date of birth gender. You may have, if you have a list of 10,000 people, you're like, you're probably not going to go through and manually put everyone's gender in necessarily. You're probably not going to know their age and you wouldn't manually do that either. Country is actually important. You'll see here. It's like great Britain, France, etc. You want to actually have the country code us or Canada or wherever you are. And you want to actually have the state identifier because that will narrow because Facebook's looking at the whole world here. So that'll narrow it down to country state. And then if you have the name, then it's like they can really match it with the email or the phone number. So the more data you have, the better for this. And then you can create a lookalike audience based on that list who will find people who are similar. So that's really, really cool. As you go through this, it'll allow you to select the match types. And essentially what you're going to get is a match rate. The next one is video. So essentially what we would do here is people who've engaged with a video. Now you can choose a video from an ad that you've run or a video that you've posted organically, but basically people who've watched a certain amount of your video. I like through play personally through play is 15 seconds. So if people watch 15 seconds, of your video probably means you caught their attention enough where you can identify them as probably your target audience. So I'm going to use through play. What you need to do here is choose the actual video. So you're probably going to go through. So I'm going to choose our agent launch page, and then you're going to choose the video in which you want to retarget. So you'll see here, this video was an ad that we ran for getting realtors to download our Google ads guide. It was pretty successful. So 20,000 people watched at least three seconds of that. So that's a pretty good one, but we ran many variations of this ad. So I'm actually going to go through and so you basically want to go through and find the video that you want to retarget. And the reason I'm doing this is I know these people are probably our audience because I started that video by saying realtors, if you want to generate leads, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, I can assume if they watch 15 seconds, they're probably a realtor who's interested in lead gen. Um, then you can go Instagram and you select the same videos and then you're going to create the audience. So now the audience is here. You can then create an ad. So you can go back to the ads manager and create an ad from the start or just create an ad here. So I'm going to walk you through how to actually use the audience here and show you a little bit about how we would retarget our audience, how we're actively retargeting our audience right now. So we've, we're implementing this new strategy where we're testing offers, testing ideas through running a quick ad. So the one we're running right now is a new construction ad. So it's basically saying, Hey, realtors, do you sell new construction homes? Well, our new construction funnel is getting two X better results than our resale campaign. So if you're interested, send me a message. That's basically the ad I'm running. Uh, and I'll show you that once I set this up. The reason we're doing that is because right now for our business, like new construction homes are actually easier to buy. There's more inventory in a lot of markets. So that campaign we're running, like we build custom landing pages and custom Google ad strategies for real estate agents around how to do this funnels working really well. So we're starting to market it a little bit more because not a lot of other people are doing it. There's a lot less competition. Now it's not for people who are, you know, 
new to new construction. It's for people who are established. So there's three layers to an ad. There's the campaign, the ad set, and the ad. The campaign is like your goals, your objective. The ad set is all your targeting. And then the ad is all your copy and creative, okay? So I'll take you through this step by step. Basically, that's it. We're just gonna name the campaign in, in, in here. Here, we're gonna do messaging apps. So essentially, there's special ad category in the campaign. I'll just go back for a second. You may need to do this, and sometimes our ads get rejected because we're in real estate, but we're not selling real estate. So we're not technically in the special ad category, but real estate agents are. Now, whatever objective you select for your campaign is gonna change what options you have later. So like traffic is when you're generally driving traffic to a website or landing page. Engagement is when you're staying on Facebook. Leads is when you'll build a lead form where people can actually opt in right on Facebook, et cetera. So for us, we're gonna choose engagement and click next. And then basically the conversion location is where you're gonna say, what do you want people to engage with or do? And so the destination is messaging apps in our case, because we're asking people to message us. So basically in here, the ad set is your targeting. So this is where I'd say basically from 25 to 55 is our target audience. So you can use that as a guide, but let's say I send $10 a day. That's a good amount of reach. Um, and that's really all I'm gonna do. Retargeting is actually pretty simple. Like a lot of times for ads, and I'm not gonna go over the full Facebook ad tutorial, make sure you subscribe because I will be dropping like a full tutorial on just Facebook ads, not necessarily retargeting soon. But then you can go into detailed targeting and add demographic data, interest data. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do and you can layer them on top of each other. Now for certain businesses, that makes a lot of sense. For some businesses, you can't do that if you're in the special ad category, like finance, real estate, a few other things, politics. Now, if I save this audience, you can basically use the same framework here and you can just add in 25 to 55 which is basically what i named the ad set right save as new and that's a saved audience so i can reuse that audience easily later if i want in another ad but the actual way to do this is just duplicate your ad set that's an easier way to actually just reuse the audience advantage plus placements facebook's all about their advantage plus these days it's their new like uh, delivery system across multiple platforms i'm just going to leave it for now if you do want to get a granular you can do manual placements and you can actually decide in here where you want your ad to show like generally speaking the feeds is where you're going to get most of the action what i actually am going to do is turn off apps and sites here the reason is I'm trying to get people to message us. So I don't really want people to have a place where there's a lot of friction for them to come message us, okay? Like search results is fine because this is essentially Facebook, but apps and sites is like their third party stuff. So this is their audience network as they call it, which is partner businesses that show Facebook and meta ads on them. Now, if they're seeing an ad there, I don't want them to have to go to a new platform to just message us. I wanna keep them on the platform. So there's no exact science to this feeds, we get better results, but they're also more expensive to advertise on. So if you just clicked feeds, then essentially you would be paying a little bit more for your reach. So I'm just going to do manual and remove apps and sites. Now, honestly, apps and sites are not a big part of it. So you can just leave advantage placement. It is recommended. You know, there's no perfect way to do this. You can definitely just turn off apps and sites if you want. I, for my last campaign I ran, I literally just left advantage placements because you're not spending generally a lot of money on those sites anyways. So let's keep going and we'll actually create this ad. So basically we're going to create an ad or use an existing post. If you've already made a post on your page, you can do that. Now I'm going to add media. I've already uploaded this video in here, but that's essentially what we're going to do. You can change the aspect ratio and I would just go with the ones that are recommended, especially if you film yourself like I did, where you, it still looks good. Like you're in the frame, you can hit next. And then I would just leave all optimizations. The reason is this is a very raw unedited ad. I just cut it. Like I didn't actually add any editing to it. So this is just what we do for our tests. If it works, we'll go and we'll do a big edit and I wouldn't use any of these, but visual touch-ups, all these little things are nice. It's not necessarily going to show me like a real preview yet because it may not have loaded. I would just leave this, let Facebook do its thing. Oftentimes these days, like if I was running this tutorial two years ago, I would like to control the manual stuff a little bit more. These days I find it does work pretty well when you just kind of leave things. So now you're going to add your text. So basically you want to have, there's something called above the fold. So above the fold is above where you have to click see more to see any more. Now, because this is real estate and new construction, I'm literally going to put emojis that are relevant headline. I would put message me. It's a little more personal send message call to action, send message for this. Most of the time call to action. I do learn more. We've actually studied this and this generally gets the best results except for a messenger ad. So that's really it. Like, honestly, there's not too much more. The only difference is if you are doing a messenger ad. Now I already have this, I can use existing here, which is messenger new construction. But basically what this is, is what do you want people to be able to click on when they do message you? So for us, it's, Hey, Eric, are you interested in learning more about our new construction funnels? And the only answer is yes, please give me a call. So you can get more granular with this where you can have multiple questions, right? You can add a question and you can choose what you want people to have an option to reply. Generally, the simpler, the better when they do that, it's going to say, Hey, great. What's your phone number? 
you can also book a call with me directly here and it sends them a link. So it gives them those options. We can also call them right on Facebook. So there's a few options here. That's what's kind of cool about this, but I'm just going to use existing and then hit publish. And that's really it guys. Uh, you can do this with any type of, of a custom audience. The cool thing about this too, is when you go back into audiences, find that same audience, if that's working. And I would do this after the retargeting test. I'm not gonna do this necessarily right now. I, I mean, I am doing it for our other ad that I'm testing this on, but I did it after a few days and I got a few messages uh, where it showed that this was kind of working. So I wanted to test a lookalike audience for it too. But basically if you find this is working and you're getting people responding to, you know, this, then you can take this here and you can create lookalike. You can also do this by hitting create audience, look like audience, and it'll ask you for the source audience, but you can just click this, go create look alike. And essentially from here, you're going to choose how specific you want the look alike to be. Now this really depends on how niche your audience is. If you're talking about fat loss, like you might be able to do 10%, right? Cause there's a lot of people who are in that audience. It's pretty big, but for us, it's like real estate agents. Like it's pretty narrow. So we usually use one or 2% look alike audience, which is saying, I want you to find the 1% of people that are most similar to this people who've watched my video for more than 15 seconds, basically what that is. And then you can run another campaign using that lookalike audiences. If you want my full Facebook tutorial, I'm going to be launching it in a little bit here. I'm also going to be launching a YouTube ads tutorial, some more Google ad stuff, lots of cool things. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one.